SQL Server 2022, IQP Intelligent Query Processing in Azure SQL Database? Oh, this sounds good. Next on Tales from the Field. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We have videos every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Community Roundtable, where we talk about and share links from the Azure Data Community about the data community for the data community. And then on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits about a particular technical subject. You're watching one of those right now. Let's get over to the good stuff. We're going to start by going to GitHub and we're going to download the worldwide importers sample databases. We're going for the standard tier backpacks because we're not using in memory OLTP or the premium tier. I want to use serverless compute for this. Now I'm going to open up Azure Storage Explorer. Great, great tool. And it's going to allow me to upload these backpacks into Azure so that way I can access them via my storage account. Now that I'm back in my storage account, I can go into my container and specifically I'm going to go to my SQL backups container. I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call that folder backpacks. So I can place the backpacks that we've just downloaded. I'm going to click upload and go to files. And then I'm going to select the ellipsis and we're going to select the two files that we have in our downloads folder. And I'm going to upload those. Reason being is we need these to be in blob storage in order for them to be able to restore to Azure SQL database. Now that I've got this, I can head over to my Azure portal and I can click import databases. I'm going to say select database and I'm going to go to the storage account that we're using. I'm going to go to the container that we created and the folder and I'm going to select my worldwide importers DW database. I'm going to take standard off the name because I just want it to be this. And I'm going to click configure. We're going to select serverless. I love the serverless tier. We're going to say, let's go with 10 cores. I'm going to leave the auto pause capabilities there. I'm going to click apply. Now, part of the reason I love serverless, this is a great way for me to be able to use this database because I'm going to use it for a little while and I may want to come back and use it again. What will happen is it's going to shut off the compute. It will auto pause if I haven't used this database in an hour. I'll still pay for the storage and I'm in a dev test account, so I'm not paying for the license. So essentially all I have to do is pay for the storage and then it will auto pause by itself. Fantastic stuff. So I showed you how to do this in Azure, but there's a faster way to be able to import the backpack if you're able to. If you go into SSMS, you right click on databases and say import data tier application. We can browse to where we have these backpacks sitting on our local environment from our download. We can open them. And then it's a very simple thing for us to be able to then choose it. Now we can't choose serverless, unfortunately, but we can choose general purpose. So I'm gonna choose general purpose. I'm gonna go with 16 cores because 10 wasn't available. And what I'll do is I'll resize my database after I load this. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit but this is a much faster option and are really, really nice. But I wanted to cover both ways to do this in case people were curious. One of the things I can do, I can open up a query. I can already start to um, query my DMVs and see that my user tables are being loaded. So with these tables being loaded, um, I'm very close to having this complete. And once it's complete, we can begin playing around with the intelligent query processing. So, with this done, I do want to point out that the labs that we're going to do, and this is Azure SQL Database, important to realize we've got this in Managed Instance as well, but this is all from Bob Ward's SQL 2022 class, aka.ms slash SQL 2022 workshop. We're going to use module three, and specifically we're going to come down to the section on uh, intelligent query processing. You can see there's some new advances that we have. And we're going to look at the automatic performance healing with memory grant feedback persistence. We're going to start by uh, creating a skew of statistics. And I'm going to kick off our execute query. But the one thing I want you to keep in mind is take a look at this. Look at how long it takes this query to run the first time through with our out-of-date statistics. We get an inaccurate memory grant. We're not getting the right number of estimated statistics for the number of rows we're returning and our query takes almost a minute. Let's go take a look at our execution plan. You can see 
that are hash match joints, I have a warning. I have a spilled attempt DB. This is very expensive. We have uh, 1.4 kilobyte that were used, but it feels like we needed a lot more than that. As a matter of fact, I can go and I can query the query data store because I have one in my database in Azure SQL database. I can see I needed closer to 600 meg and I had 1.4 meg. That's not good. So what does this intelligent self-healing process get us? Well, it collects this information, as you can see, regarding the memory grant information. We can see in the execution plan how much we had and how much we actually used. So what happens if we just run it a second time? If we just run it a second time, this query is going to run so much faster, I don't even have time to zoom in and tell you how quick it ran. Two seconds, a minute down to two seconds, ridiculously fast. So if we take a look, no hash, no spill, no warning. And additionally, if you look at this, we got the amount of memory that we needed for our memory grant it increased across the board. This is that self-healing nature of the code that we have within SQL 2022 and also in Azure SQL database. We just got to make sure our database compatibility mode is at 150. Now I can simulate what would happen in previous versions of SQL by clearing the database scoped uh, procedure cache. I'm going to delete my database. I don't need that uh, because our scope is within the database. I execute this. This wipes out the plan cache. Now, if I go back in and I re-execute my query, let's see how long it takes. Ooh, it's still two seconds, still two seconds. And that's because moving forward, we've retained this information. Thanks to being able to look at the query data store, we're able to pull out our desired memory grant. Fantastic stuff. Remember SQL 2022, but also in our Azure offerings as well. So what did we learn today? We talked about intelligent query processing and specifically we talked about the self-healing persisted memory grant feature that is available in SQL Server 2022 and Azure SQL also in Azure SQL Manage instance. You know where we like to keep this going in the comments. Was this interesting? Was this helpful to know that this feature is there? Because you may not have known that it was there and you have access to it. Again, you just kind of make sure you're at compatibility mode 150 and above, 150 and 160 support this. All right. Hope you have a great week out there. Take care, everyone. Today's going to be a good day. Yeah. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do.